Good afternoon, brethren. Welcome to our afternoon session of our Chinese New Year Virtual Bible Conference. We praise God that He has sustained us this morning, and we trust that He will continue to do so this afternoon. To start our afternoon session, let us sing our first hymn all the way. While this is a familiar hymn, we will be singing it to a different tune. ask God's blessings upon our afternoon session. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you once again for gathering us over the airwaves today. We thank you for strengthening us so that we can continue on with our sessions. We know that you will meet us in our needs. Thank you, Father, that we can worship the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our life. In him we are safe. All the way that he leads us, our needs will be provided for we will have a bright future because He has went ahead. Father, bless every part of this program. May your name be lifted up in our midst. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us read all together Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Ready? Begin. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall He also appear with Him in glory. Let us now give the time to Pastor Demdom to open us in a word of prayer. Before Pastor Paduhila will resume his lecture, let us sing, Lord, here am I. Ready? Sing, Master, the callest, I gladly obey. Sir, the callest, and this I reply. 
of the cross Willing to suffer reproaches and loss Willing to follow if thou wilt but lead Only support me with grace in my need Master, the callest and this I Let me reintroduce to you our lecturer. Our lecturer hails from Hilongos, Leyte. He is now the senior pastor of Fundamental Bible Church in the North at Consolation Cebu. Ito po yung daughter church ng Fundamental Bible Church kung saan nagpastor dati si Pastor John Vic Anat and later si Pastor John Digno. Our lecturer is happily married to the former Miss Jazil Tirado of Bago City, Negros Occidental. He is the Visayas Director of World Teach Ministries, also known as Walk Through the Bible Ministries. Kasapi din po siya ng Grace Drive Ministries. He is a member of the Executive Committee. I give you Pastor Paul Mar Paduhila. Again, welcome to our second session. Salamat po for uh, being with us. Again, our, uh, our study is about uh, the life of Ruth, uh, the, the, top, uh, the title of the topic is Refuge, Finding Home in the World of Change. We just finished session one. And session one is about losing home. How would you respond when you lose your home or you're displaced or you have experienced tragedies and testings in your life? And we have asked those questions when we ended our session last time. And I pray that as we continue learning in this, uh, in this story about the, the story of Ruth, may we really find ourselves trusting God and being faithful to our Lord. Now, we now go to our session two. Session two is finding favor. And as we start, magpray po muna tayo. Let's pray. Gracious God, Maraming salamat po that we can continue in this uh, uh, learning of the, the life of Ruth. We pray, dear Lord, that you again grant us wisdom and the gamitin mo po yung, um, yung servant mo na maging mouthpiece namin today and that we will learn uh, lessons from your word and we would be able to apply those lessons in each of our lives. Salamat po that we could celebrate this Bible month and we could focus in serving and knowing you more in each of our lives. This we ask and pray in Christ's name. Amen. Session number two. Now, Naomi is back in Bethlehem, but emotionally, spiritually, she is still far away from home. Have you felt this? Na umuwi kayo sa bahay ninyo, but still you're thinking, parang you're not at ease. Parang hindi mo bahay. I mean, hindi ka comfortable, parang ganon. But of course, nasa bahay ka na. I mean, you're in your own home, in your own place, but then you're feeling uneasy. I mean, you're not at ease. E eto yung nangyari kay Naomi. Naomi is now in Bethlehem. Umuwi, umuwi na siya. After the tragedy of losing her husband, losing his, his, uh, her sons, Malon and Kilian, and then another, uh, another daughter-in-law left her. Of course, bumalik, umuwi sa pamilya nila. And now, one daughter-in-law came with her, and that is Ruth. That's the, that's the background of our story. Now, continuing on that, we take our story from Ruth chapter 2. Chapter 2 na po tayo. Now, chapter 2 verse 1 says, 
na Naomi had a relative on her husband's side from the clan of Elimelech, a man of standing whose name was Boaz. Boaz was a close relative, a man of good character. Uh, let's just put that first in a proper perspective kasi uh, we will get to know who Boaz is later in the story. Of, th- of course, for those na nabasa na ninyo or you have already known the story of Ruth, uh, this might be a little review uh, but maybe later we will get to know more about who Boaz is. Now, Ruth, uh, Ruth is, is with uh, Naomi and the uh, first mention in, in this chapter is Boaz of who Boaz is. Naomi is geographically in Bethlehem but emotionally, she still feel far from home. Now, the, the name Boaz, it means a mighty man. Now, the first reading, it seems like it's irrelevant. Bakit mention agad si Boaz dito? I mean, if you're reading, if you're reading a book or if you're reading something, curious ka, what, what's, what's with the name? I mean, the story is about Naomi going home and all of a sudden, there's a name here mentioned uh, saying that he has a good character and he is a relative. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? What's the connection with our story? Later, we will get to know that because the writer is foreshadowing that there is hope for Naomi. And perhaps, God has not forgotten her after all. <clears throat> So the writer just dangles the information, nilagay yung information, and later will be developed into the story. Let's continue with verse 2 of chapter 2. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, eto na naman. Anong apelido niya Ruth? The Moabite. Tama! Alright. Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. Now, Ruth took the initiative of providing for herself and Naomi. Again, in their time, sa panahon nila, yung widow and yung mga babae, uh, they cannot work, of course, because most of them na, that are working are mga men. That's why ang ang uh, ang Panginoon, ang Lord, binigay or nilagay yung command sa Bible sa mga Israelites that when they will try to to uh, do the harvest, hindi nila pupulutin anything that will be dropped from nag-harvest and then from those sides ng mga farm nila, hindi ko kunin yun. That's part of the law. So that the the widows, the poor can take it para may kainin din sila or the foreigners would be able to eat. Now, again, as I said, if you look at the name of Ruth, Ruth is always labeled with these words, the Moabite, or Ruth from Moab. She also was called a foreigner. Now, this is a major theme of the story because Ruth is an outsider, an uninvited guest, a newcomer, a stranger. So that's why yung kakabit ng pala niya, the Moabite, is very important to take note. I don't know about you. Uh, have you felt you went to a place and you're a, a, a stranger? Of course, pwede sabihin yan kasi you went to Hong Kong and you feel like a stranger because you're not from Hong Kong originally. You're from the Philippines. Now, iba-ibang lingwahe. May, may Mandarin dito. May Hokkien. May ibang-ibang lingwahe or, or English perhaps. So, um, that's why siguro pag nakakarinig kayo ng Tagalog or Bisaya or Ilonggo or anything dialect na uh, na na nasasalita nyo, of course, you'll be excited, right? But you know, Ruth was in a place where she doesn't know anybody except Naomi. And many people would look at her as a foreigner, talaga. And she's a, an outsider, an unbeliever per se, because he's serving other gods, not the God of Israel. But then if you remember, when Ruth said to Naomi, your God will be my God, it's as if saying, you know what, Naomi? I'm rejecting my own God and I'm accepting your God. If we go back to that, that was a wonderful, uh, that was a wonderful event na nangyari kay Ruth na through the life of Naomi, she found uh, the true God of Israel. Now, 
It's Ruth's idea to provide food for herself and Naomi. That's why this shows uh, how broken Naomi is. Sa situation na ito, it's like Naomi lost hope. Ayun, matanda na ako. God's hand is upon me. Wala tayong trabaho, wala tayong makain, ganyan-ganyan. So, nung nag, nagpaalam si Ruth na I'll go and glean, I'll go and get some grain of whom I find favor with, sabi ni Naomi, all of a sudden, sige, pumunta ka, go, go. All of a sudden, yan yung sinabi ni, ni, ni Naomi kay Ruth. Now, the word favor, it means grace. Ruth's initiative for providing for herself and Naomi was unusual for a woman, especially a foreigner. Unusual po ito. Bakit? Kasi, hindi niya man alam, hindi niya alam yung culture ng, ng Israelite. Maybe she heard it about about them from, from Moab or uh, I don't know, but this is really an unusual thing for a foreigner. Uh, will God use a foreigner to provide for uh, for one of his daughter-in-law who believes he, he forgot, uh, that God has forgotten her? Now, picking the leftover grain is called gleaning. That's why Book of Leviticus gives us some background of this. Ito yung sinabi ng Leviticus. As I was saying kanina, Leviticus 19, verse 9 and 10. Sinabi ng Panginoon, When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap the very edges of the field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor, the alien, or the foreigner. I am the Lord, your God. That was the command of God to the people of Israel so that God could also provide for the foreigner, for the poor, for the widows, and for those who have nothing to eat. So, pagpatuloy natin yung istorya natin. Again, we're now on, on verse, or in chapter 2, verse 3 and 4 now. 3 and 4. So she went out and began to glean the field behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she found herself working in the field belonging to Boaz. Let's pause for a moment. Again, eto na yun. Yung question natin kanina, verse 1 of chapter 2. Bakit all of a sudden minention Boaz, a relative, a close relative, a man of good character. Bakit kaya? Eto na po, yun, uh, eto na yun, yung, yung pagpatuloy ng istorya. Eto yun. Um, God really made the way. They needed food, Ruth and Naomi. So Naomi, um, Ruth initiated to get food for them. So umalis si, si, Naomi, si, si Ruth, nagpaalam kay Naomi, and of course, by God's, uh, by God's uh, providence, nangyari ito, that uh, sa lahat ng field na, na dapat siya mag-glean, e eh, kay Boaz pa. Ito yun. Uh, now she found herself working the field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech, just as Boaz arrived from Bethlehem to greet uh, and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. They called back. So again, God brings Boaz and Ruth together in this story. Slowly, the, the story unfolds. As it turned out just then, is it a co- coincidence? Coincidence ba to? Nagkataon ba? Or is it God's providence? Someone said, a coincidence is a miracle where God decides to remain anonymous. Sabi ng isang, isang person. A coincidence is a miracle where God decides to remain anonymous. Of all the fields Ruth could have chosen, bakit ito pa? Sino bang nag sa kanya? Okay, yan yung pilihin mo, right? Naomi didn't suggest looking for help from a relative, most especially Boaz, now that the first mention of Boaz was again in verse uh, 1 of chapter 2, now it's being significant. Naging importante na yung pangalan ni Boaz as we go through chapter 2. Now, pagpatuloy natin, verse 5 to 7. Boaz asked the foreman of, her har- of his harvesters, whose woman is that? Who- whose young woman is that? The foreman replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. 
She went into the field, and she had worked steadily from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. Now, if you look at it, the foreman, yung in charge, casually mentions Ruth's connection to Naomi. She identified Ruth no, as a Moabite. Again, there's the identification. Ah, ayan. Uh, nung tinanong ni, ni uh, Boaz yung, uh, yung caretaker, yung uh, uh, in charge, sino ba itong babae ito? Yung etong, etong young woman na ito na nag, uh, nag-glean. Uh, kailangan nyo ba yan? First time ko ata nakita yan. Ah. Sabi ng ano, sabi ng, uh, ng in charge, ah, yan. Ano yan? Um, daughter-in-law ni Naomi. Casually, sinabi ng, ng in charge. Of course. So, the overseer affirms, eto yung sinabi niya, di ba? The overseers affirm that Ruth is both polite and hardworking. Ano bang sinabi ni Naomi, uh, ni, ni Ruth, when you go back to the verse, in verse 6, sabi daw ni, ni, ni Ruth sa kanya, she said, please, let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. Very polite. Nag-ask ng permission. Of course, I don't know if she knows the law that she can just glean anytime. Kasi that's how the law said or is commanding the Israelites. But if you, if you see her, her character, she was very polite, asking permission. Can I please glean? It really tells about who she is. Kung sino talaga siya. I know, I know it's a question, a Moabite, an unbeliever. Can she be like this? Of course, eto na nga. And not only that she was polite, she was also hardworking. If we go back again to verse 7, sabi ng ano, sabi ng caretaker, she went into the field and has worked steadily from morning till now except for a short rest. Sabi niya, of course, parang hindi na papagod boss. Eh, Mula umaga until today, ayan, nagtatrabaho, nagiglin. Walang pigil, walang tigil. It's very hardworking. Of course, providing for her mother-in-law. Now, Ruth identified as a foreigner and outsider and also of excellent character. Well, we all tend to separate people into categories, right? Well, it can be helpful to organize it is all it has also a downside as well. We can unconsciously ascribe characteristic to anyone who belong to a group. And very ano yan, very it's like we're uh, already judging people based upon their lahi. For example, um, many people would think, ah, Filipino yan, hard working yan, di naman lahat eh. Uh, may, may iba naman na hindi. Or uh, sabihin, uh, eto, Indian to, uh, tamad to. Hindi naman ha. Uh, I mean, Indians are also hardworking. So, we cannot ca- categorize people based uh, of their race and where they're from. Of course, we can never do that because they are different personalities and they were raised differently. Now, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must ask God for help identifying implicit bias against certain group of people who are different from us. That's why we never judge people. We let God judge. We, again, we can, we, can, uh, only, um, we can only decide for ourselves, no? Para sa atin lang, and we can never decide for them. So kung nakita natin, let's not judge them. Let's not judge them. And uh, that's why the overseer, even though she, he called uh, Ruth as a foreigner, a Moabite, but then... He had a good information about who Ruth is, that she was hardworking, that she was polite, a true focus on the character of Ruth. Hindi po siya nakafocus na ayan, ah, outsider yan, unbeliever yan. That's the problem with us, especially in the church. When somebody would come and uh, would look like somebody na hindi Christian, we would judge them. We will look, th- look them from head to foot. Titignan natin. Christian ba to? Ito ba yung Christian? Ganyan, ganyan. Now, let me tell you a story. This is a true story. There was this uh, this play na inorganized ng ano, inorganized ng isang grupo who went from church to church. And this play was about showing what 
the, the Christian heart is all about. I mean, how we treat people, how we look at people. So they have different, ano, different um, uh, nito, cast in the story and uh, in, in, in the show. And hindi nila pinaalam uh, sa, sa, sa church kung sino ang parte ng, uh, uh, ng, ano nito, ng play. So may part ng play na ano daw siya, parang uh, she's a, uh, she's a uh, sex worker na pumunta sa church, very short skirt, pulang very red lips, and of course, umupo doon. And everybody's eyes were on her, looking at her. Of course, why would she go to church and, and dress like that? And all of a sudden, ito yung nangyari, may taong grasa, ang dumi. Of course, gustong pumasok ng church. Sabi ng guard, kasi ang laki ng church, in, in church na nag... nag uh, ano sila, naggumawa ng play na yon. It was a big church. Sabi ng guard, hindi ka pwede pumasok kasi magugulo ka lang sa loob. You cannot go there. You can go inside. So, pinalis ng guard, pinalis ng guard. Eh, kinabahan na yon kasi part siya ng cast. Kailangan makapasok siya. So, gumawa siya ng paraan. Of course, nakapasok siya. And all of a sudden, this play was done. Ito na yon. Tumayo yung babaeng, uh, yung, yung napakaliit ng skirt. And tumayo, eh, sabi niya, ganyan, ganyan. So, part pala ng play. And all of a sudden, nagulat sila. Kasi, uh, pinaalis ng isang deacon yung, ano, yung taong grasa. Kasi sabi niya, di ka pwede dito sa church kasi manggugulo ka lang. Sabi niya, ganun. No? Magbihis ka muna ng maayos para makapunta ka sa church kasi mabaho ka. Ganyan, ganyan. And all of a sudden, tumayo siya, pumunta sa front, e di nila alam, part pala ng play. After nun, they they realized na, you know what, the church is open for everybody. And we cannot judge people from going inside uh, and, and tell them not to go and worship, that they can worship, that they themselves decided to go there. And that was part of the message of the play. And sometimes, ganyan tayo. Of course, wala naman siguro taong grasi talaga na pupunta sa, sa church because most of them just want to lay in the streets and, and go somewhere else. But sometimes when we have visitors go to church, sometimes we judge them by their looks, by their dress, and how they act, or, or not maybe how they act, kasi hindi naman natin makita agad. But we judge them already in, in our eyes and in our hearts that, that hindi naman sila. Maybe they're just somebody, kung nakita tayo ng tattoo, uy, may tattoo, baka galing mo dito. Ganyan. Maybe we just try to judge them about how they look, how, how what they see, uh, what we see in them. You know, Ruth also went through that. But then she was not judged because she was a Moabite, because she was an outsider. But even though she was an outsider, still they were able to tell about her good news, about her character. And yun, they did not focus on being a Moabite, but they focused on the true character of Ruth. How about you? Do we also judge people? I hope not. I hope not. Verse 8 and 9. Ipagpatuloy po natin. Sabi dyan, So Boaz said to Ruth, My daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean another field. So don't go away from here. Stay with my servant girls. Watch the field where men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I have told the men not to touch you. And whatever you are, whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water uh, the water jars the men had filled. So, if we look at this, Boaz assured Ruth of his provision and protection. Ito niyo nangyari. Now, Boaz is trying to really provide because nakita niya, siguro alam niya, she had, uh, he, Boaz heard that Naomi came. Uh, siguro, he also heard what happened to Elimelech, to Malon and Kilian. And this uh, Moabite woman who went with Naomi, who stuck with Naomi, na hindi umales, hindi umuwi, pero uh, sumama kay Naomi now, gustong uh, kumuha ng pagkain para sa kanila. So nakita niya siguro how she was really hardworking para ma-provide yung kailangan ni Naomi and ni Ruth. So sabi ni Boaz, okay, don't go anywhere, okay? Don't go anywhere. Kasi during their time, it was very dangerous. Again, women had no right and, uh, no uh, big rights in, in the community. So, uso doon yung, um, uh, yung mangyayari, yung mag, 
gagawing uh, hindi maganda sa mga babae, even the fields. That's why what what Boaz did to Ruth was not only providing the sinabi niya, don't go anywhere, go with my servant ladies or servant girls. Where they harvest, you harvest. I already told everybody not to touch you. Kasi there were instances noon that the, the men would do something to the women because again, women had less rights in their time. So not only it was providing for the needs of, of Ruth, but it was protecting Ruth from people who wanted to harm her. Grabe na yung love story, no? nag unfold na. Ito na yung slowly as we introduce the story. Now, Boaz protects Ruth. Ito yung protection niya. Now, in chapter 2, verse 10, at this, at this, she bowed down with her face on the ground. She exclaimed, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? When Boaz told Ruth, don't go anywhere, I'll protect you, I'll provide you, don't worry about this, just work here, be diligent, be hardworking, and these things will be provided for you. Ito yung respond ni Ruth. Ito yung respond ni Ruth. Ruth responded with humility and gratitude. After all she heard from Boaz, what she did was she bowed down and asked in humility, What have I done? Why did I found favor in your eyes and notice me? I'm a foreigner. I am an outsider. I am an unwelcome guest. And yet I found favor in your eyes. Now Ruth expressed to, by Boaz grace and compassion. Again, the word favor, it means grace. It means grace. And Boaz replied, verses 11 and 12. Sabi ni Boaz, Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. How you've let your father and mother, your homeland, and came to live with the people you did not know before. Now, Boaz answers her question and explains the motivation behind the action. Ito yun, no? Nag-ask si, si Ruth, what have I done? What ha why have I found favor in your sight? Boaz really right on answered that question. In answer niya yung question, I have heard, nalaman ko, anong ginawa mo, and I have seen that you have a pure heart. Ito yun, behind the answer, really, Boaz knew the heart of Ruth, that Ruth loves her mother-in-law. May joke nga noon, right? Joke lang po ito. Sabi nila, um, may family ba or may mag-asawa ba na walang problema? Sabi nila, meron. Sino yan? Si Adam and Eve. Bakit wala silang problema? The answer was, kasi walang in-laws. I don't know, I don't know your relationship with your in-law, but you know what? Look at Ruth. How much she wanted to take care of her mother-in-law. How about you? Is this the same relationship with you and your mother-in-law or your father-in-law? If not, maybe this is the best time to, to really engage with that relationship, to really develop that relationship, just as this, uh, the story tells us, that how really Ruth loved her mother-in-law. Now, verse 12 tells us this. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. This is a beautiful picture of God's love like an eagle protecting her young. A wonderful blessing that Boaz was trying to give to Ruth, saying to Ruth, May the Lord God of Israel repay you for whatever you have done, for the love you have for your mother-in-law. Wow, what a wonderful encouragement and a blessing from a person that really doesn't know Ruth. The, the only information that Boaz had was how Ruth treated her mother-in-law. How Ruth was so diligent to provide for her mother-in-law. 
Again, Boaz knew all about Ruth and blesses her. And Boaz understood that God's wings are wide enough even for foreigner. Even for foreigner. Boaz's behavior was rare and countercultural. He showed no xenophobia. Xenophobia is a phobia, a fear against foreigner. No hostility towards a uh, foreigner. That's uh, that's xenophobia. Yeah, uh, that's countercultural. No, God cares for all people, not just Jewish people. And Boaz clearly showed that. That that's how God really is. That who that's how uh, God uh, shows love to other people. Let's read verse 13. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord? Ruth said, she said, You have given me comfort, and you have spoken kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servant girls. Now, Ruth is comforted by Boaz's kindness. Again, again, Boaz's behavior was counter-cultural. Um, even though Moab and Israel have a long conflict, uh, history of conflict, it Lot settled in Moab, Moab King Balak opposed Moses in Judges 3 record, the account of Moab King Eglon uh, that, ex- that oppresses Israel. But then there was no, nothing in, in Boaz's eyes that judged Ruth. Now, if we continue with the story, Ruth showed humility and Boaz uh, dis- descended from, uh, from uh, Salmon and Rahab, the Canaanite. If, if we go through the lineage of Boaz, Boaz also came from a, a lineage of an unbeliever, which was Rahab. You remember Rahab? That, uh, uh, that woman from, uh, uh, from Jericho? That helped the spice, nalalan uh, yun, and and uh, that was uh, the woman uh, that that Boaz came from or ang, ang uh, kanyang lineage. That's why perhaps his willingness to accept people from different cultures rose from his wish, and uh, that people would have accepted uh, accepted his family as as people has accepted his own family, siguro yan din yung pinapakita ni Boaz kay Ruth. That even though she was a foreigner, even though she was an unwanted guest, an invited guest in a family of believers, still, he extended grace. Let's read further. Verse 14 to 17. Verse 14. At mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come over here. Come over here. Have some bread. And dip it in the vine- wine vinegar. And when she sat down with the harvester, she offered her some roasted grain. She ate, and all she wanted had some left over. As she got up to glean, Boaz gave orders for the men, even if she gathered among the sheaves, don't embarrass her. So Boaz does much more than the law requires, right? Ito uh, yung, yung sinabi niya as. She, is, she was gleaning. Boaz gave orders to the men. Let her gather, even though it's already part of the sheaves. No, let her gather. Don't embarrass her. Do not reprimand her. Ito yung sinabi ni, uh, ni Boaz. Uh, even pull some, some stalks. Rather, pull some stalks for her from the bundles and leave for, for her to pick up. And don't rebuke her. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Rabbi, no, from, from morning until evening, she was trying to, to find the food. Um, then she threshed the barley she had gathered and it amounted to an epa. Now, Boa's instructions are unprecedented. I mean, the instruction ni, ni Boaz is unusual for a, um, a boss. Na parang freebie kung baga. No, bigyan nyo, uh, or hulog nyo uh, uh, intentionally. Or if kukuha siya doon sa nag-gather na, don't, don't uh, reprimand her. Hayaan nyo lang na kumuha siya doon. And you know, an epa uh, in, in their time, or an epa is equal to 23 liters or 6 gallons, about 22.5 kilograms. So, kung sa atin sa Pilipinas na yan, ang sipag ni Ruth. In just half day, nakakuha na siya ng almost half a sack. 
uh, for a day of gleaning. Grabe naman. So verse 18, ito pa yun. By, uh, by the way, by offering Ruth extravagant generosity, Boaz does more than the law requires. Ito yung ginawa ni Boaz. Verse 18, ito yung verse 18. So she carried it back down uh, to town and her mother-in-law, uh, how much have you gathered? Ruth also brought back out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Ito pa yung nangyari dito. Not only that Ruth came home with the epa of barley, ito na yun, but she also brought food for her mother-in-law. Grabe yung, yung love ni Ruth talaga for Naomi. I mean, if you, if you go through the story, grabe talaga yung pagmamahal niya sa mother-in-law niya. Na kahit, uh, kahit nag, nag, uh, nag-work na siya for whole day, still, hindi niya kinalimutan. Of course, nakakain siya ng marami doon kasi in-invite siya ni, ano, ni Boaz. Come with us. Eat. Dip your, dip your bread into the vine vinegar. Eat this, eat that. Eh, pinakain. So, hindi naubos ni Ruth. So, tinago and tinake home. Bring house. Para kay nanay. Para kay Naomi. Dinala. So, eto yung sinabi. Her mother-in-law, verse 19. Her mother-in-law asked her, Where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about one at whose place she had been working. The name of the man I work with today is Boaz, she said. Now when Naomi learned that the field belongs to Boaz, everything starts to make sense. Verse 20, The Lord bless him. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is our close relative. She is one of our guardian redeemer. Boaz is identified now as a guardian redeemer. Again, remember Ruth chapter 2 verse 1. Now we understand why Boaz is so important in the story. Kung bakit mention a God in verse 1, sinis Boaz. Again, this is the unfolding of the story. Of, of all the field that Ruth could have picked, God clearly led her to Boaz's field. And now God is rekindling Naomi's faith in him. Dahil sa ginawa ng Panginoon through Ruth, na nakita sa lahat ng pipiliin ni Ruth na pwede puntahan, na, na pwede siyang mag-pick up ng grain, e eh kay Boaz pa. Ito yung nakita. And if you read the words of Naomi there, Naomi said these words, He has not stopped showing His kindness to the living and the dead. If you remember, when Naomi went home to Jerusalem, I mean to Bethlehem, she was very bitter. She was going through a spiritual crisis, a faith crisis. She was feeling that God is behind everything that she's experiencing. Sinasabi niya na it's God who is allowing her to experience that. Kaya uh, naghirap siya. Kaya she's, she's bitter and the hand of God is against her. But all of a sudden, now she sees. Nakahita na niya. That still God sees what she's going through. You know, that is also what is happening in us, in all of us, in you and in my life, in our life. Kuminsan, we feel God is detached. God does not care. God does not see. Hindi alam ng Panginoon yung, yung ginago through natin, yung nafe-feel natin. Parang sinasabi natin, God does not care. You know what? God cares for you. God cares for us. Just as what, how Naomi felt that time. That she felt God is against him. God is doing these things to her. And all of a sudden, nakita niya, she saw that God is still working, moving in the midst of his people. That's what happened to Naomi. 
No, a guardian redeemer, according to Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5, so that we can understand what the guardian redeemer is. The Bible says, if a brother, if brothers are living together and one of them dies without a son, his widow must not marry outside of the family. Her husband's brother shall take her and marry her and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her. A guardian redeemer was bound by Jewish law to marry his brother's widow in order to protect her, preserve the family land, and perpetuate the family name. Ito yun, again, as, as we've said in their time, ito yun nangyayari. To protect the family name para magpatuloy yung pangalan. Kasi if, you, if you've noticed, if you read the Old Testament, ang daming names na mini-mention kasi they're really they're really um, into uh, yung pangalan or yung yung uh, lineage nila kung saan sila galing. Uh, that's why this part of the scripture kinumad ng Panginoon so to preserve their family. Now the family, not the government, provided for hurting people when they needed help. Now the social system may seem strange to us, but it carried it, it cared for widows, orphans in critical need. Again, in their time, it was hard for widows. It was hard for for uh, for this uh, people na anyone uh, to to live and to to work for themselves. That is why when you notice and when you remember when Naomi told her daughters-in-law that I cannot bear no longer a son, that was, that was actually according to the law and according to the culture and according to protecting their own family. Now, when we see that, that's, the, that's their culture during that time. Let's move forward, verses 21 to 23. Then Ruth the Moabite said, He even said to me, Stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all my grain. Naomi said to Ruth, Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It will be good for you, my daughter, to go with his girls, because in someone else field, you might be harmed. Ito yung sinabi ko sa, sa inyo kanina, that in their time, uso kasi, that people will be doing something, especially men will be doing something for uh, to, to some of the ladies. That's why, nakita natin that what Boaz was doing for Ruth is to protect Ruth from being harmed by people. Again, we see how vulnerable a woman was to violence and sexual abuse in their time. It, it is a sad commentary on the spiritual values of God's own people during the dark days of Judges. It was really a sad commentary during their time na ito nangyayari. Again, Judges 25-21 or 21-25, everyone did what was right according to their own eyes or in, in their own eyes, if they see it fit, kung para sa kanila, tama to, gagawin nila. That's why it was ho- so hard for women before. It's easy to see why Boaz was very respected for his integrity and generosity. Now we can see and we can understand Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. Why it started with Boaz's name and giving him a wonderful character background. Kasi, he was genuine and his, his integrity is so good and is also generous. Verse 23. Pagpatuloy natin, verse 23. Sabi to, so Ruth stayed close to the servant girls of Boaz to glean until the barley and the wheat harvest was finished and she lived with her mother-in-law. Now, every chapter ends with a dramatic tension. What will happen to the harvest is over. I mean, the harvest will can only last for months. And mag naman for many months until the next harvest. Ang, ang tanong ito, the question is this, what will happen to Ruth and Naomi when the harvest is done? Kung wala na silang mapupulot, when, kung wala na silang maglin, will they have food to eat? Will they beg? No, the story of Ruth teaches, oh, again, what will happen? Will God continue to provide? The story of Ruth teaches more than the custom and the culture. It reveals the heart of God. It reveals the heart of God. 
This is how we should read all the stories of the Bible. Not has history, not has history so well known what happened back then, but as widows in the chapter of God, He provides for people, especially for those who are in need, not just His people, Israel, but foreigners, widows, displaced people. That is why He is worthy of our trust too. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 2, uh, verses 12 to 13, sabi dyan, Remember that the time you were separated from Christ, excluded from the citizenship in Israel, and foreigner to the covenant of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you are one. Uh, once were far away, have been brought near together by the blood of Christ. Through Christ's sacrifice, our guardian redeemer, we can come home as a member of God's family. Through Christ, though we were foreigners, they, though we were not part of the covenant, uh, the, co the covenant people of God, but then through Christ, we now belong to that same family. You know, it's easy to forget that you and I are strangers to God because of our sin. Like Naomi and Ruth, we desperately needed a Redeemer. Again, if we go back to the book of Ephesians, verse 19 and 20, it says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizenship, citizens with God's people and members of His household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus Himself as the chief cornerstone. It is often said evangelism is just is like one beggar telling another beggar where to find food. Maybe it's also a refugee telling another refugee where to find home. One orphan telling another orphan where to find family. And now that we have been grafted into His family, our calling is to guide others into the same relationship that we now enjoy and that relationship is with our God and our Savior. And that's the story of Ruth chapter 2, Finding Favor. May God continually challenge us and as we again discuss uh, this, this uh, and, and process what we have learned and what we have heard today, these are the questions that we need to answer. Maybe we could group, uh, group ourselves no, to our discipleship group and spend at least 15 minutes answering this question. First question, what are some ways Ruth blessed Naomi in this chapter? Has God blessed you through someone else during a hard time in your life? How? So, paano naging blessing si Ruth kay Naomi sa chapter 2? And meron bang tao na naging blessing sa inyo sa, sa panahon din ng mga struggles sa, sa buhay nyo? And paano sila naging blessing? And number two, what does this part of the story tell us about the character and the heart of God? Ano, anong sinasabi dito sa story about who God is? Again, when, when, we, when, we, when we try to experience God's love, you know, even though we're foreigners at first, you know, once we belong to the family of God, we will be accepted. We will be accepted. Before we end, let me just share a story. Uh, my experience, you know, I, I grew up with an unbelieving family. Until now, I'm the only Christian in my immediate family. Of course, I'm very happy if I, I would know somebody who's a Christian, na, na relative or somebody na ano. Uh, but then in my immediate family, I'm the only Christian in the family. And it's really a struggle. It's really a struggle. Before, uh, kasi, uh, again, um, th they would always tell me that I would not be saved kasi I changed my religion. Eh, I'm not going into religion. Relationship yung pinuntahan ko. I mean, the only time that I felt very welcome was in the family of, of God when, you know, you have these struggles. They would not judge of who you are. Because we are all one in, in the sight of God. That even though I was a sinner, very one, uh, one of the worst sinners. But then, in God's eyes, I was accepted. And I found family. 
I found a second family. Not a biological family, but a spiritual family. And that's where I found love. That's where I found uh, the love of Christ. That God loves me despite of who I am and despite of what I've done. And maybe you are that right now. Maybe you're listening. Maybe you're trying to ponder upon that. Maybe you're going through tough times. You know what? God accepts us of who we are. We just need to just draw near to Him. And if we don't have any relationship with the Lord, this is the best time to ask the Lord to come into our hearts and make Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. May God bless us and may as we continue learning about His Word. Let's pray. Gracious God and loving Father, we thank you for the life of Ruth. We thank you for the life that you have given. And salamat Panginoon that we can continue serving you and we have been accepted in your family. Lord, may the, the life of Ruth be a blessing to all of us as we learn further about your word and about what you are doing to each of our lives. So bless us continually, dear Lord, as we uh, continue with our Bible conference. In Christ's name, Amen. Thank you again. And Thank day. you, Pastor Paul Mar, for ministering to us again this afternoon. I have but one announcement. Tomorrow evening, we will not have a prayer time video. It doesn't mean that we will not pray. But we cannot provide you with a prayer list to guide you in your prayer time. So, you can still meet uh, in small groups, two or three or four. And you can still pray together. Pero wala na po muna tayong prayer time video. We praise God for another fruitful study of His Word. Let us offer to God this prayer in a form of a song. Let us sing, My life is yours to control. Ready? Sing. With my whole heart I humbly seek you. Now use my life, O Lord, I pray. I yield my stubborn will completely May your commandments guide my way My life, Lord, is yours to control I give you my heart and my soul I'll seek your will never Father, we thank you once again for providing our spiritual needs today. And we commit to you the lesson that we have learned for this afternoon. Continue, Lord, to work in our lives so that we would be able to optimize these spiritual blessings that you have given us. Much have been given us today. Much will be required of us. Give us wisdom to be wise stewards. In Jesus' name, Amen.